supposed to have my sound on or not um welcome to session two for my moon catcher pattern yay <laughs> um i don't know how many of you guys are going to be putting into this i but this is crazy i have this way too big so you can't even see everybody's comments there you go you don't need to see me so much okay <laughs> so how are you guys doing who do I see? I see Brenda and Karen. Sarah's here. Angela's here. Are you guys excited about some paper piecing? <laughs> Hi, Jackie. Diane's here from Australia. My Aussie friend. Hello, Marilyn. Hi, Shirley. Scrunchian's here. <laughs> Yes, Seely. <laughs> every time I hear scrunchins now, I just think of the color purple. That's just what I do. My mom's good. So, um, listen, I'm still, I'm totally praying for all of the people in Louisiana who got hit really hard. Um, the path of the hurricane was supposed to go directly to where my family lives, but then it turned and went to New Orleans. So, um, totally praying for those people. Um, uh, but thankfully that meant that my family didn't get hit. So it was, it was good. Um, hi, Jessica. Hi, Shannon. Hi, MJ. Karen E is here. Hey, Tiff. Tiff's here. Um, so anyway, Yep, Christine Bertrand. Roberta Zorzlinski. Okay, so I did know, I, I think I do know a Christine Bertrand. Christine, well, I mean, I, I, I knew a lot of Christines. <laughs> Designs by Christina Cunningham. Roberta's here, Nancy's here. See, Nancy, you did it. <laughs> you got it, girly. <laughs> <laughs> she says the hurricane is horrible. I do hope everyone is okay. Yes. So yes, definitely. Hi, Christina from Admire, Kansas. That's a lovely name of a city. Y'all, while I was at Steph's, she got me this little mug. Can y'all see? Oh, that's cute. Isn't that cute? She's a sweetheart. Hi, Deborah. You're not that late. We've only actually been talking for a couple minutes because I, you know, played some music and stuff. 
get us into the mood. Y'all all heard that, right? Because I'm still trying to figure out what I'm doing over here. Hi, Heather. <laughs> hey, Laura. Okay, so, um, Princess Yvette, we were neighbors and we lived by Eunice High School. Okay, I'm trying to remember a Chris, oh, like Christine Fall? <laughs> is that your maiden name? If it is, oh my goodness, do you sew? Are you a quilter? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness how are you sweetie i haven't seen you guys in like a kajillion years um hi mary jane karen says she loved reading your blog post about your visit with stephanie it was great yeah we had a great time it was a lot of fun it's always way too quick but but it was good it was really good Tiffany's it's needed tonight. Stephanie is off on Zoom weeks. Yes. Every time that we have um, a piecing a real meeting, um, then I have Nita as my moderator. And when I don't have a Zoom on Mondays, then Steph comes over and moderates. <laughs> I think you guys just haven't seen Steph in a while because I keep canceling all the all the lives, so I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I'm here tonight. Thank you. I missed you guys too. I love you guys. I it's just sometimes, you know, life gets in the way. Y'all know. Y'all know. So Heather Brent says she can't see you for the comments. She's like, put the comments. Oh. She, she says she wants to see you. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm a little over here. Look, I'll put my face really close. Hi. <laughs> No, no, not right now. Um, ah, Sherry's here. Netta's here. Hey, Netta. Hey, Sherry. It's a little hard to hear Nita. I know. I'm trying to, I try to like turn it up as loud as I can because she's on my phone. Let me see. I think that's as loud as it'll go. I'll try to like turn it so that she gets a view of nothing and then maybe y'all can hear her better oh my goodness becky mendoza she did there you bet what what did i miss better check it out i can't i'm i'm on the thingy my bop hold on let me go back oh that. my goodness becky maybe i can hop back on later enjoy your sewing oh my goodness I like big bucks and I cannot lie. You other brothers can't deny. When a girl walks in with an itty bitty waist and a round thing in your face, you get sprung. Wanna pull up tough cause you notice that butt was stuffed. Deep energy she's wearing. I'm hooked and I can't stop staring. Oh baby, I wanna get with ya and take your picture. My homeboys tried to warn me but that butt you got make me so horny. <laughs> Thank you, Becky. <laughs> Kiddo today can't really stay on. Looking forward to when I can watch live again. Miss all these conversations. Have a great night, guys. Good night, Becky. Oh, you're so sweet. Care of the sick kiddos. I hope they get better soon. I know you said he'd been sick for a bit now, so hope he feels better soon. Hey, Steph. Hey, Shelly. I saw Shelly pop on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. Shelly popped on, Linda Parsons, Diane Walter. Who else? Who else will we get on? <laughs> Over here, try to keep up. 
Um, no, it's not a new microphone. Maybe I've just got a big mouth tonight. I don't know what I was telling uh, Steph that I don't know what it is, but I feel like um, kind of like peppy tonight. I don't even know why. Because it's been a crazy day. I mean, crazy. <laughs> um, hi, Shelly. Yes, my hair is pink. Like that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> There's like two of y'all who like missing hearing me sing. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to get started, guys. I'll give you a little bit of background about what I've been doing um, this past weekend. The uh, class that I'm going to for, let's see, the, I'll show you the pattern. I'm doing Coral Reef, and I'm going to a class for this one, and so I had the first class, and basically it was for us just to design, uh, like put all our fabrics and whatnot inside the, the design, which I had already done, because I thought we were supposed to do that before we got there. <laughs> but apparently not. Um, so I had that done and we started to go over how to prep the pattern. So here's what I learned. What I learned so far is that um, there's going to be a lot of prep because there's a whole, whole lot to do before you can start sewing anything. Hey, Sierra. <laughs> um, so Again, this is the one that I'm doing with you guys, the moon catcher pattern. And so I've decided that, you know, for me, I'm going to do all the prep. You guys can watch me do all the prep. And I want to, before I get started, I want to say once again, I am not a Judy Niemeyer certified instructor yet. <laughs> It's going to take me a while to get there, but I'll get there. Um, and this is like, you guys are starting on the road with me at the very beginning because this is like my very first Judy Niemeyer pattern that I'm putting together. Well, actually these two, I'm going to be doing them both like at the same time. So I'm going to, oops, sorry. I'm going to learn like what to do on Coral Reef whenever I go to the classes. Like the next class we have is not until... Um, October, I don't know, like the second or third week in October. So we have a while, and before we get to that class, I'm supposed to have everything prepped up, which means cutting out all the patterns and all of the templates, um, getting everything put into Ziploc bags, and also setting up the whole pattern in a three-ring binder. So, um, I'm going to take you guys step by step uh, doing Mooncatcher. I'll be doing Coral Reef in the class. And um, Karen says she's staying at her dad's house, sorting his house out as he passed away two weeks ago. Oh, I'm sorry, Karen. I didn't know that, sweetie. Um, well, we'll talk to you while you're, while you're doing that. You can listen to us take you off all of that. <laughs> <laughs> Take your mind off of that while you're doing it. Um, yes, I okay, did see. So oh, go ahead. Heather Brins and girl are having a Judy Niemeyer University class retreat thing in Texas next April. I looked at it and OMG, she's like, pew, 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 sticker shock. Yeah, it's not cheap. So, I mean, I have actually been thinking about doing this for a while. Um, now, the good thing is that because everything is so spaced out, it's not like you're putting out all the money at once, right? Um, so I, I have to go to like two retreats, um, and they have to be the ones that uh, are at her, her ranch, I guess. Is it in like Wisconsin or Missouri or I don't know, somewhere where it snows a lot in the winter? Um, <laughs> So I have to go to two of those. I've scheduled them for next year. 
and they're like eighteen or nineteen hundred dollars each. Um, so they do let you, you know, like when you register, you put down a deposit, and then up until then, you can just keep making payments. So, um, so that you don't have to, you know, pay it like all at once or whatever. I think it is Montana. I think you're right, Steph. I think you're right. Um, so I'm doing one of February. Yes, that's it, Brenda. Yep. Um, so I have one in February and one in June, I think. Um, and I also have to make five queen size Judy Niemeyer quilts. And they have to be completely finished, like quilted and bound and everything. Um, I have to take classes with certified instructors. So this one is going to be one, the Coral Reef one, and then I have to find another one. Um, and let me see, what else? I don't know, I'm sure there's going to be plenty else. But once you have all of that stuff done, then you have to submit it and they have to accept you. <laughs> so <laughs> hopefully I don't get all this done and then they're like, you suck. You know, I, I don't think they will. But, you know, there is always that uh, that possibility that it could happen <laughs> where it snows a lot. <laughs> I think it's Montana. <laughs> I know it's Montana. It's Montana. They're all talking about it. <laughs> Hi, Where's Tamla. Where it snows a lot, Missouri, LOL. <laughs> I, know. <laughs> I know. Okay, so I'm going to move the camera uh, or, or your camera view so that you can kind of uh, start watching what I'm doing. We can still talk. Um, you won't see the comments up on the front there. You'll have to look on the right side to be able to see them or on your phone, wherever that is. Um, so let's move that. Okay. So here's my pattern. And I have my three ring binder with um, some sheet protectors inside. Ready for me to put everything in. And I'm going to take this uh, front page and I'm going to stick that in here so that I know what I'm doing in there. Now these are all of the, um, the different ways that you can print up all of your fabric and know how much that you need to cut everything to cut out and all of that. So I have those printed. Um, I'm going to stick those in at the beginning somewhere, but I'm going to put them to the side for just a sec. Okay, so here's the booklet right here. And these are all of the patterns that I'm going to have to cut out. I've already done one packet, um, so we'll just go as... As, you know, one at a time. Now they told us that we are to take our booklet and you want to put a ruler right on the end. This is a thick booklet, this one. Just so that um, it just gets separate pages because they're front back and you put them in the sheet protectors and then, actually I think I'll use this one because I was already using this one for paper. Let's see. That's a lot of paper. <laughs> okay. get my folder again
And since they're front and back, you just put one page in each sheet protector. When I was putting the uh, sheet protectors in the in the folder, they come like in the box and they're facing one way and then it flips and it just so that it helps because this is like bulky side right here. So it helps it to lay flat in the box and they can fit more in one box without having like a giant box. So I was just like, I was just slapping them in there, slapping them in there. I wasn't even paying attention to where the top opening was. I had to do like half the thing over again. I was like, oh my gosh. It has been way too long since I've had to like make a folder of. Now the coral reef pattern that I'm working on has got like like a million different sections. It's like crazy. Okay, million maybe a lot, but there's a lot of different sections, and um, it's different from this one in that each section has its own like little um, color card or whatever. And so there's like a whole bunch of those to do. I'm supposed to do those before October, whenever as well. What's that? Yes, there's a lot of homework. And I thought it was really funny because like the ladies who were there in the group, there's only six of us. So it's a, it's a small class, which is probably good. And um, they were like, oh, do we have to do all of that before we come back? I'm sitting there thinking to myself, dude, I have got two full-time jobs. Uh, <laughs> I like burned the candle at both ends. If I can get all this done, you best have that done. Because she's also saying like, you know, the longer that it takes for us to do all of the stuff like this, then the long, you know, the more time it's going to take out of our classes. Because I think we only have like, you know, there's only a certain amount of classes we have and then we're done. So whether or not the quilt is done, you're, she's done. She's not, you know, she's not going to keep coming back. So... <laughs> I'm like, y'all best be able to get this quilt done while we are in classes because I'm going to be livid. Okay. Now. <laughs> What's that? And you're saying if, 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 to the other students, like, if you slow me down. I know, right? Like, I've made a fortune for this class and I'm not going to want to be slowed down. Yeah, she said she had, like, one group where they took, like, two whole classes just to, like, color their quilts in. I'm like, are you kidding me? What? <laughs> oh, I would have been so mad. Ain't nobody got time for that. No. Absolutely not. All right, so I've got these guys in here. Let me move all of my rotary cutters over. Got all my stuff for like packing orders. <laughs> Scooch. All right, I'm gonna try moving this forward a bit. Okay, so there's apparently 
something on here. She's very verbose. I'll tell you that. Okay. So when you get to um, where the instructions start, she tells you how to label your Ziploc bags and what goes inside. Okay, so. <laughs> okay, so Heather says, do, I would have had that done before the dang class started and at least halfway through my freaking fabric matching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, they didn't do anything. I don't know, it was, it was just weird. But you know, to be fair, it's not like there was an itinerary that said, hey, we're going to be doing, you know, X, Y, Z. You have to have this ready before you come to class. None of that was said. So I just kind of assumed that we, that was expected for us to have at least our design done, you know, but. Yeah. Right. Yep. Okay. So this is going to be AC1. And I'm going to put inside. Unit AC1 plus associated templates. And I have like that first section like all cut out, cut out I think. So I'm going to start filling my little bags up. This is going to be AC number two. And I am going to put in there unit AC two. And the associated templates. I have AC number three. Is that one right now? Yep. And that will have unit AC three plus associated templates. You should see this enormous box. I have to show y'all my enormous box of uh, Ziplocs. <laughs> I thought, you know, making all these quilts, I might as well have like a kajillion thing of uh, things of Ziplocs. AC number four. That will be units. AC4 plus associated templates. Okay. Those are all our little guys. Now I have to figure out from these that I've already cut. And they're labeled very well, so um, it's not that hard. I'm going to, this is AC1. So that'll go there. These all say AC2. Okay. Now, Heather Grins, she said, uh, make a note to yourself because that would have been a good thing for the instructor to have done beforehand. Okay? Okay. And then she said, okay, where did you get that giant box of Ziploc bags? Inquiring minds want to know. Amazon. <laughs> you can find them on Amazon. 
just say, uh, type in like, Ziploc quantity 100. Because <laughs> that's how many is in the box. Okay, so I've got my, my units broken out. And now these are the templates. And this one says AC4. So I'll go there. AC4. Okay, now I'm getting getting to understand why it, why my mom why it is. Oh, I'm assuming that why her mom asked her to order Ziploc bags and a binder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't think why. <laughs> That's why. Uh, this is the and one. Buffy Laura. She wants to know: Did you look for any pattern corrections? Um, we, I have not looked for this particular pattern yet. I will do that. Um, I, before I start anything, like I'm just going to cut everything out and then I will go and look for corrections. Um, that is definitely something that they told us to do. So thankfully the Coral Reef one, I think only has one very small change. Um, so I, I still need to look for Mooncatcher, but yeah. I, I do need to still do that. Okay, this one is AC4. This is AC4. AC3. AC3. AC1. And AC1. Okay, so now I'm going to take one bag at a time. I think what I need to do is like get a, like a project, like a big plastic project box or something that I could start putting everything in and have it like ready to go. Um, okay, so four. I'm going to take this over here first. Let's see, I'm going to put these guys together. Since they're similar. And I'll take this guy. And all of these. Okay. And then I have to like get over myself because I am totally anal. And you have to just be okay with folding stuff. Because it's not going to, they're so big, they're not going to fit in the Ziploc the way you want them to unfortunately, or the way I would want them to, let's put, put it that way. Um, so, put those in there. Just remember, you can iron them. I know, I know. You know what's funny is, like, they were, they were asking the instructor if we were supposed to iron them before we started sewing with them, and you can tell that she's just... She's just not one of those people like me who are, like, anal retentive, right? So, and she's just like... Well, I guess if you have to, <laughs> like, uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I have to. <laughs> I think I'd have like a heart attack if I have like all these bins in it. Make me nuts. Y'all know me. <laughs> What's that? Wouldn't it, wouldn't it make it difficult to get the kind of precision you want if you have creases in the paper? Right? But, I mean, her quilt is gorgeous, so I don't know. And it doesn't seem to me like she's one of those people who has to iron everything. So, I, I don't know. I guess maybe she's just really good at fattening it out as she goes. I have no idea. I would think so, but. I don't have to bend this one. These are, like, nice little normal sizes. No bends. Mm -hmm. Laura <laughs> says, nice seeing you, Yvette. I forgot about my draft tonight for fantasy football. Wish me luck. <laughs> Good luck. luck. <laughs> uh, Dawn Denny says, hi, y'all. First live in a long time. Hey, Dawn. It's been a while. It has been a while.
Okay, so I've got my AC section all done. So I'm gonna set that aside. And then I'm just gonna move, I'm just gonna pulse whatever's next. <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna be, I'm gonna play the devil's advocate here. Okay. Um, have you seen the Ziploc bags that are two gallon size? Well, that's what these are. Those are two gallon size? Yeah. Then they must be bigger. Cause look. Oh. You're seeing the Spanish side. Hold on. See? Two gallon. There are some hefty two and a half gallon. Um, I think that's what she wanted us to get. But when I went to Amazon to go shopping, they were sold out at the time. So it's possible they have them now. But I figured two gallon would be okay. I mean, they didn't have them at the time. I needed them now, so... Okay, so this section right here, right, there's two pages and they are exactly the same. So what she showed us was she took, I think what she had was like four pages and she had this whole thing where she took uh, some straight pins and she just pinned them together, made sure they, they were exactly where they were supposed to be. Then she like put some staples in it and then she cut it and i'm you know listen <laughs> i'm like I, I don't know i i just don't i'm not gonna do all of that i said to her i was like why can't we just i mean it's all this has like been bent in this shape like for a while and i'm looking right at it and it's like it's perfectly right on top of each other so if i just make sure I have a big old, you know, I, I don't know. I, it would just took her forever to do all of this pinning and all this, you know, I, I'm not going to do that. Y'all do y'all do whatever you got to do. I'm just going to do mine like this and pray. That's how I, that's how I roll. So I'm just going to cut these out with my rotary cutter. What? It's coming from the, the perfectionist? Yes. Exactly. Teresa McBrayer says, Yvette, hi, honey. Hi, Teresa. I think this is just, this is the perfectionist who has no time. That's, that's what it is. You see, I look at them and I have not, I have not messed anything up. Everything's good. So I'm just going to set that aside. The trick, what I'm seeing here is because the paper will kind of start to move a little bit. Just lift up and start again. Like hold it flat. And you should be okay. And I'm taking my time. I'm not going like super fast. And if anything, I'm trying to go a lot further away. And you're freaking me out. I am? Why? Your fingers are in front of that blade. Oh my goodness. I'm barely moving the blade though. And I've been quilting for like 20 years. If I chop a finger off, I'll buy all of y'all lunch. Actually, I probably would do it on purpose to just, like, chop this arm off. Yeah, don't do that. I know. I'm just, I'm just frustrated with the stupid arm, that's all. I won't really do it. I won't make y'all, like, see the blood. What size? I don't know what size your hands are. You want to know what size my hands are? Y'all gonna give me a hand transplant? He's, uh, okay, so my husband has this thing. I'm sorry, there's a train going by. 
<laughs> okay. You're making her nervous too. Who nervous? Angela Stoutinger. She says she's. You're making her nervous too. Oh. Okay. I and promise y'all, I'm not going fast. Tells me not to. I'm the, I am not going to rush. I can tell y'all. She cut her ring finger off on her right hand and had to have it sewn back on. She really? She recommend it. Wow. Okay, so my husband is asking what size your hands are because <laughs> he insists that I use my cut prevention gloves when I use my rotary cutter to cut large patterns. Oh. I didn't know they had something like that. They do. They have similar gloves that'll help keep you from cutting your finger off. And I recommend any quilter who plans to use a rotary blade like that is right now, get one. Get a set. If I knew they had one, I would have already I would have already gotten one. I'll look into that. Yeah. If I, you were to get a quilting board. Uh, a freedom quilting glove. What size would you get? It? The smallest one. Small. Okay, tell me what size is your ring? This ring? You think I'm you supposed to remember that? I don't know. Uh, I have fat fingers, so eight? Maybe? It does. I want to get her an eight. Cause Hold on. You, so you just use like, like, no, I don't think that I have what you're talking about. I'm thinking about uh, machine gears. I have those somewhere. Right. Her too. Okay, so um, <laughs> what I'm talking about is a pair of Kevlar gloves. Oh, they are Lord. designed to prevent you from cutting yourself with uh -huh. sharp ends. Okay. The cutter blade won't cut through it very easily. A, a, a needle or a pin will probably go through, but your rotary blade won't cut through it. Well, that's interesting. They're really, they're really very nice. <laughs> I think I need to send you some because you're making me very nervous. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he was. Oh, oh, oh gosh, I can't remember now. But if Tiffany was still on, she'd tell us there was someone who cut her finger. Did I lose you? Oh, I'm on hold. It says. She put me on hold. She was telling us about somebody cut their finger off. Are you back? Yeah. My son was like, I got locked out and you met me back in. <laughs> and then he got locked out. Poor thing. Yo locking that kid out. It was his sister who did it. Oh. Does her kids use those those gloves for work? Was used to wear those gloves when she worked in a grocery store cutting fruit. She says they drove her crazy. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering about. I mean, I guess I shouldn't be concerned about that, but that it would like hinder your movement or something. Well, if you're putting down the hand that you're using to hold the paper down with, okay. it doesn't move it. I usually just use the one. The hand that's controlling the rotary blade doesn't get in the glove, but the hand that's not going to control the rotary blade and is going to be in front of it right. or near it is the one I put the glove on. Gotcha. I do recommend them because, you know, hey, 
getting your finger sewn back on is not fun. Cutting your finger as bad as the one lady did who, who I can't, now I can't, her brain, her name has completely escaped my brain. But she uh, used, um, egg skin to cover her, her, her cut. Wow. And see, Stephanie has put up a, 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 a link to madamso.com products where they have those gloves. So if anybody's interested in going there and getting them, I, I highly, highly recommend them. They will definitely save you from bad rotary accidents, but they will not save your foot if you leave your rotary blade open and knock it off of the table and it lands on your foot the wrong way. Okay, good to know. Just saying. And many of us quilters like to quilt barefooted. I know I'm barefoot right now. Right? <laughs> Can you imagine? Okay, so I, I, I know that I'm really bad at dropping things. I drop a lot of stuff. My hands are not super strong that way. So I try to remember to keep my rotary blade closed, but I know there are times when I forget. Yeah. Yeah, Kathleen, that was Heather. Heather Schmink, uh, Schmink, uh, I can't remember how you say her last name, but yes, Kathleen, that's what I'm talking about. And she put a video up to show you how to use it to, to close big, big cuts like that. Absolutely wonderful. Wow. And Brenda says, you're right, Yvette, no need to pin or staple those pieces. Yeah, I mean, she had us, like, buy glue and all kinds of stuff. And, I mean, I bought it, but I was like, I don't like glue in this stuff. I bought it because I'm I'm trying to, I look like a ghost. I'm trying to do it the Judy Niemeyer way, you know, like, try to do what they say. But, yeah, this is craziness. Okay, so let me see. Now I'm going to... All right, so I'm gonna have to make a copy of this guy so I can put my fabric swatches. I'm gonna do that. Oh my goodness. What? Designs by Cunning, by Christina Cunningham. So Christina, she says, a lady that was demonstrating for Martelli at, at, at the quilt show cut herself pretty bad right in front of us. Oh my goodness. That been pretty shocking. Wow, yeah. And Julie Knight says, I knocked my scissors off the table one time and, and they stuck straight up in my wood floor. I was thinking, ouch. Yeah, right? Oh, my goodness. Like, oh, yeah. Because it would have, uh, I mean, especially if you have like a big pair of um, nine inch tailor shears, which I have a pair and I went to wipe them clean. They were so sharp, they cut into my palm. Wow. I mean, seriously, if you drop something like that on your foot, it's going to go deep. Yeah. <laughs> and it's going to Holy cow. Christina says she still bought the system. I hope you didn't get the one that had the blood on it. <laughs> I hope not either. All right, so I'm on to my next bags. I'm doing the group B. I need a B1 bag. What? <laughs> Unit BR. And it says... I don't want the package. <laughs> New ones in the package. Good to know. <laughs> yeah, I really wish I'd known about the egg, the egg skin thing when I was young and learning how to carve. My uncle was trying to teach me how to carve wood, 
oh, I was doing okay, and I was carving away from myself, except for when that piece of wood came off like it was supposed to, the knife went down over the end and right through my finger, right in my finger, cut it straight down to the bone. Oh, my goodness. So long, I couldn't get it to stop bleeding until eventually I called my mom at work, and then I packed out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I've been mean, bleeding for hours and I couldn't get it to stop. I don't think I'm really ready for these bags yet, but I started, so I'm just going to finish them up. This is going to be B2. is very cool and yes they are very much like chain link but the ones that they use that are are stretchy and will fit over your hands and fit pretty snug they are actually like chain links but not made of metal they're made of kevlar it sounds neat <laughs> they're really nice Champ says, hi, everybody, I missed. I was making 14 egg egg salad. Okay. Um, Hello. You the, the, the Kathleen? <laughs> Hello, Kathleen. I thought machine gears were cool until my husband handed me these gloves to keep my hands safe. Right. I was like, oh, that's, that's really tidy. I like that. Yeah. They're pricey, but they're worth it. I wish I knew how she like came up with the the letters and stuff for this. They just seem so arbitrary right now. <laughs> Maybe once we start putting them all together, it'll make more sense. It's, it's probably going to make more sense as you begin assembling. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. One's left, one's right. Yep. B1 right, B1 left. Yep. That's what I'm thinking. All right. So I'm going to just set these aside because I don't think I have anything to put in there yet. Oh, well, I got some stuff. Okay, it doesn't matter. Here we go. Go on to the next sheet. All right, so now I've got this guy. This set, this set sends a klutz glove. Absolutely. Ah. I'm a klutz. I them. <laughs> Okay, so these are not all the same. These are different, so I'm going to have to cut these one at a time. And because they're so big, like, to me, it's, you have to kind of, like, step back and go okay I can see where everything is you know because it's it's so big that you want to make sure that you're not cutting in the wrong spot and cutting something off alright hold on what does this say about this Doo -doo -doo -doo. I haven't yet, except for Jelly Bean throwing my coffee all over the place. Well, see, that was Teddy. He threw my coffee all over the place, jumped up, knocked it out of my uh, out of my hand. I mean, it's not like 
I don't, was it Teddy? Who was it? Was it Teddy? Or was it Zena? It was Zena. It was Zena. Yeah. Too many animals that I end up babysitting, but she, she knocked my cup out of my hand and it went all over my sugary dew quilt. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Talk about mishaps with dogs. So I buy this lovely, lovely apple pie for, for dessert tonight, right? Right. Get done with dinner. We all go about our own little things, getting things done. The dogs have been fed. We're all doing the, the stuff. Guess what? Chicken butt. What? Ate the whole pie. Wow. She served it right off the counter and ate the whole pie. Wow. I mean, I do not understand. Well, she's a big dog, but still, why the pie? <laughs> she ate her pie. I was open for apple pie with ice cream. Okay, so Brenda Foley huh. wants to know, how do you handle the solid pieces? You actually sew the paper when you connect, when you connect them, or, or just sew it normal? Uh, I, don't, I, I don't know what you're asking. How do you handle the solid pieces, like those pieces right there that are just like one big, is that like one big piece of well, fabric? these are the templates so from what i understand because number one i am not a certified instructor just want to throw that out there again <laughs> and number two we haven't covered this in class yet so from what i understand the templates is how you cut out your pieces of fabric and then using these pieces of fabric you will take them and sew them onto your pattern, your temp, your, see, I call something else. I call my sewing papers templates. They're calling this a template and they're calling that a unit. So when you're sewing your fabric onto your units, you're going to be using these fabrics that you cut out using the templates. That's what I understand. Okay. And Angela Stoutinger wants to know, why are you leaving some space around the pieces when you cut? Well, this is part of her technique where she wants us to more than cover the um, seam allowance. And then when we are trimming down each unit then you get rid of all the excess that's how she does it from what i understand again because i don't know yet i haven't done it but from what i understand that's what that's what she does okay. we have a couple of questions okay uh are those notches or are those registration marks where here or the pattern template pieces uh all i know is that they say trp i don't know what that is yet and there's okay. points on there that say trp and i figured them it must be there for a reason i don't know yet okay and it might be that's where when she was asking about the solid pieces she says i mean in my project box like my candy oh. pieces Dude, preface that. <laughs> okay, what's the question again? Because now I have to hear the question again now that I have to change my brain a little bit. So how do you handle the solid pieces? Let me go back here and make sure I get this right. So uh, she wanted to know, how do you handle the solid pieces? Do you actually sew the paper when you connect them or just sew it normal? Okay, I think I know what you're asking. If you have a piece, uh, a template that only has one piece of fabric on it, what I do 
is I will put a very large basting stitch around it just to hold it where you need it um, on the pattern because when you're going to connect them together you don't want it moving around and it's a heck of a lot easier to connect them together if you're using the line that's on the paper that's what makes foundation paper piecing so precise does that make sense I think it does we'll see if she does yeah well, we'll just, I'll, I won't sit and wait. I'll, like, cut because I'm gonna need to <laughs> there's no way I'm going to finish all this tonight. I'm just let y'all know. And I don't expect to, but um, just to let y'all know. Because there's a lot to cut. There's, there's a lot of paper here. Sierra says my dog wanted that pie more than I did, and she's probably right. <laughs> she had a tough day, dude. She had a tough day. Give her the pie. <laughs> <laughs> Surely that is so cute. Netta says, so you base the piece between the seam allowance and the cut line, correct? Um, usually what I'll do is I will, I will try to do it right on the same line. And here's what I'm, here's what I think about whenever I'm basting. I take the piece and um, I try to figure out what am I going to be attaching to that and where. Because sometimes you'll have one where the outside of it is not going to be attaching to anything. Or it's not going to be attaching to anything until you're putting like the border on, right? So that side is a good side to baste. Whatever you're going to have to sew down first, maybe don't baste that side. Or what I'll do is be because that's why I baste it, right? So you'll have like this big old giant like five millimeter long basting stitch. Super easy to pull out. So when I'm ready to uh, sew two pieces together, whatever side it is that I am sewing onto a piece, I'm going to real quick just pull those basting strips, uh, stitches out, and then I'll put my 1.2 millimeter right on that line. And then the next time I'm adding something to it, I can just pull that piece of the basting stitch out. That way it'll hold it down until you're ready to stitch. And when you pull that basting stitch out, wherever you're uh, attaching two pieces, leave the rest of it so that it's still holding it pretty good. You just want to take that one side out and sew it down. Does that make sense? I hope. I think so. Okay. Angela Stoutinger says that her daughter's dog ate four slices of pizza the other night. <laughs> Over so to what was on the counter. That's exactly what my dog did. And she did it so quietly. We were all, we should have been able to hear her, but she obviously did it quietly enough. It was in a, a, a bakery container, a plastic bakery container. And she helped herself to that bakery container. She got it open and everything? Oh yeah, and there wasn't a lick of that pie left, not a crumb. <laughs> Well, you know, if it's out, it's the community. It's a community pizza. Not smart. And I put the wings in the microwave so she couldn't get to them. I didn't think you'd go for the apple pie. <laughs> oh. We're talking about the same dog we caught the other night. She opened up the little pantry. It's like a sliding glass door. Yeah sliding door she opened up the little pantry door 
and, and got out her some uh, King's Hawaiian rolls and, and convinced to eat those. Oh my gosh. What happened? shampoo and it did this I mean because your hair was, was pretty platinum right I mean it should yeah it was pretty platinum it took pretty good so if you use the pink shampoo will it stay pink for a while I think so you know, the other thing is that, um, like, when I try to do the, the platinum, like, I have this section right here, I don't know if y'all could see, but it, do it doesn't color all the way, and I asked my stylist if, like, if my hair was gray there, um, and that's why it was, like, hard to color or something like that, and he said no. But, I don't know, for some reason, he said try doing it with a comb. He said use a comb and uh, put it in. And I was like, okay. So, I did that, and it still didn't color all the way. So, I have no idea. Uh, so, I think it just looks funky every time. Because I can't get it to color the whole thing. Again, stupid nose. That sounds great, Shirley. I'm jealous. I'd love to have my granddaughter come live with me. I would have loved to have my grandmother teach me how to sew. So she's she's pretty lucky too. <laughs> really live near my grandmother so there's a whole heck of a lot she could have taught me she did a she was very very creative Steph? Yep. She said her, her she used to go to school with green hair, 
because they um, and Mary said her daughter was towhead and her hair used to turn green in the swimming pool. Oh, I didn't gosh. get a chance to look at the boy behind me kept dyeing my hair green. If we get together one day, I'll teach you how to crochet. What does that have to do with green hair? We went from green hair to crocheting. Yeah. My grandmother taught me how to sew as well. I wish I would have paid more attention when she tried to teach me how to crochet. Oh. I would love to have. My mom taught me how to crochet like a hundred times because every time I start, I want to crochet again, I have to learn again. I'm definitely one of those people, if I don't use it, I lose it. Especially with crocheting. <laughs> it's kind of like that if you don't really use it, you sometimes need to refresh. But if yeah. you learn when you're really young, like I did, it just comes as second nature. I yeah. don't without it. Yeah. Yes, Sherry, they make a special shampoo to keep the green, the chlorine, from turning your hair green. Wow, I didn't know that either. Yep. Angela wants to know, did you miss cutting a piece in the corner on the last one? I don't, I don't think so. What did I do? I don't know. Those were all pretty big pieces. One, two, three, four. I got all four pieces. The only thing I had left was like this, but there's nothing on it. <laughs> Heather, Heather said, I had someone ask me who taught me how to sew. If it was my mom or my dad, and I'm like, nope, I taught myself. <laughs> I think it's a natural question everybody asks, because I guess they think you're going to... Most people, like, learn from either their grandmother or something like that. That's newsprint paper. Yeah. That's what it feels like. It sort of feels like it's it's more substantial than like pat like a sewing pattern paper. It feels like newsprint to me. It really does. It probably is newsprint. Um wants to know if those pieces that you're cutting out right now, are they the template pieces for cutting the fabric? Um, yes. Mary, my mom, my grandmother did not teach me how to knit. I had to teach myself how to knit. And I tried to go to knitting circles and the ladies would all tell me I was doing it wrong. Until I got a book, it's called Confessions of a knitting heretic. And her, her first statement is, if you're getting the cloth or that you are looking for, then you're not doing it wrong. Karen says, my mother was left-handed trying to teach her right-handed kids to crochet. Did not go well. Left-handed, <laughs> I taught her to crochet. <laughs> my son, my mom made my son a darling clown costume when he was little, and he just looked at it and screamed. Carrie <laughs> says... <laughs>
such an awesome people. Well, most of them are anyway. <laughs> oh my goodness, Heather says, well, that's one way to make sure he never follows a clown down a drain. <laughs> Hello, Paula. From there. Do y'all hear all okay. the rain over here? Yeah, I have a feeling I'm not going to see Lil Sweetie tonight. good time. They think they got to start getting themselves a, a DD. A DD? Designated driver. Designated driver? <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, we were, we, the places are the one place where we actually drank but by the time we left, we were totally sober. I mean, not maybe not totally sober, but I mean, we weren't like we were drunk or anything. But the hotel was like right there across the street. So it wasn't like we had to drive anywhere or anything like that. So. <laughs> My husband says you don't need somebody for driving. You need someone to hold the camera. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. I don't know. It's just kind of fun to do that. <laughs> Heather says, I uh, may or may not have to put a bunch of these patterns on Amazon wish list so I don't forget which ones I like. Because <laughs> we didn't drive. I, I didn't. I didn't mean to imply that you did, Stephanie. You guys just looked like you were having so much fun. No, we did. We had a good time. Karen wants to know what fabric you'll be using for this quilt. Um, I am using art gallery fabrics in solids. That's what I'm using for this one. And um, 
The other one, the coral reef, I am using Phosphor 21. And that's a Libs Elliott fabric. Sierra, yes, I can. Next step, Ms., is you, you make sure you take her rotary cutter when it's time for her to cut these. Make her cut them with a pair of scissors. It, but it'll be good exercise for her hand. Are we talking about Netta? Yeah, we're talking about Netta. Okay. <laughs> She's probably thinking, stop talking to Sierra. Knock <laughs> <laughs> me off in a minute. <laughs> All right, well, it looks like we're coming up on 10 o'clock, so I'm going to, uh, this is the last one for this section. Um, so I'll stop after this one, and then we'll pick it up next week and just continue on. Green Heartbreak, she wants to know, what are you doing? She says, I'm new to paper piecing. What are you doing? I am doing my, or I'm, I'm putting together my very first Judy Niemeyer quilt. And, of course, I've got this in the thingy. Hold on, let me pull it out. Oh, no, it's on the front. Hold on, let me pull it out. So it'll be easier for you to see. And this is the one I'm doing right now. Um, the part that I'm on right now is basically just cutting out all of the uh, papers, which is um, all of the units and the templates. And then once I have all of that done... Then it would be time to start um, putting the yes. cutting the fabrics out of the templates. So that's the order in which it is done, as far as I know. <laughs> okay. She's Susan O'Neill says, "Yay! Yes, we will all need it." Definitely need it. Can't wait. <laughs> okay. Stephanie says she can't wait for April. Oh, it's her retreat. Right. That's going to be fun. Um, <laughs> look at Netta. Hey, you guys. I'm right here. <laughs> she says, you know, I'm right here. I'm like, yes. Okay, so we've got like five minutes. If anybody has any questions or something before I close it up, I'd be happy to uh, answer if I can. I just want to close it up again by saying I am not a certified instructor for Judy Niemeyer. This is my very first Judy Niemeyer quilt that I'm going to be putting together. Um, I'm going to be putting this one together at the same time as one that I am taking a class for that is called Coral Reef. So I'll pretty much be making like two at the same time. I'm trying to just go like, bam, you know, like knock them out because i got to make five <laughs> queen size quilts just to submit to be put in the running to become a certified instructor. So, um, yeah, i got a lot of sewing to do. So I'm hoping that y'all will encourage me to get it finished. <laughs> Because everybody who knows me knows that finishing is not my strong suit. <laughs> Jerry says, watching you do all this prep, wow. It's not intimidating necessarily, but it's a lot. Yes. It's amazing. Yes, I agree. Um, you know, it's interesting because when I started thinking about it, um, like last, well, last week I had canceled the the live. So the week before that, whenever I was doing, I was starting like for the first time, I really didn't know, like, I hadn't done, I've never done one before and I had not started the class yet. So I didn't realize that there was so much prep. I mean, I just, I had no idea. There's no way for me to know. So, um... So it's it's really it's really interesting that it made me think of the Fort Worth Fabric Studio quilts um, because when you're so so it, as someone who was filming the putting together of the quilt for you guys 
I, it wasn't like uh, whenever you're just a, a regular sewer, I don't know what else to say, where, regular quilter, and you can, you know, take as much time as you need to cut everything out, uh, or if something comes up, then you can just say, oh, I need to put this to the side. That wasn't an option. So when I would get the pattern, I, usually we would get it, you know, like they would try to give it to us like as soon as they possibly could. And um, to have to get all that cutting done, like you have no choice. You have to get all that cutting done and get that video made and start putting everything together. It's kind of like brought back the memories of that kind of thing where there was so much prep to do. But then by the time you had the prep done, it just made the sewing so much more enjoyable because you didn't have to keep going back to like cut again. You know, you had like everything was cut, everything's ready, sit down and sew and bam, get it out, right? So, um, so I, I'm kind of appreciating that about this prep. Um, I know that it's a lot of prep, but once the prep is done, then it, it's time to just sit and sew your favorite part and you get to do it for like a long time. <laughs> so, so I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited about getting it done. Um, so quilting in Romania came in. She says, hi, glad to catch you live. And <laughs> are we supposed to finish the quilts? I'm a terrific starter. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Heather Brins, she says, when you become an instructor, make sure you make your students do the prep work they didn't tell you to do. All right. <laughs> I think, you know, it's interesting because I do, as I sit, it's good to go and watch someone else teaching. Um, not because, you know, I think I can do it better. I just think that when you're on one side and then you're on the other side, it's it makes it easier for you to say, oh, you know what? For me, it would work better if we had blah, 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 right? And so um, whether or not that's something she needs, you know, I'm not judging. That's not That's not it at all. But I know that if I'm, you know, struggling with this, 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 or this, whatever it is, then I know that that needs to be incorporated into teaching. Um, and then as you get more questions, it's good to, um, it's good to incorporate that into the next time you're going to teach the lesson, whatever it is, because then, you know, oh, obviously this came up, maybe somebody else will have this question. So it's, you know, I do understand why they want us to go to the classes of certified instructors to just kind of get a base of where to start and then how we can, you know, improve on that, you know, and improve on what we're doing to teach too, which um, we always need to do. Quilting in Romania wants to know who you're talking about. What instructor are you talking about? This is the, the I'm taking a class for a different quilt, so it's way over there. Um, and so there's a certified instructor, a Judy Niemeyer certified instructor teaching that class, and that's who we're talking about. I'm not going to start naming names or anything. I don't think that's appropriate, but um, I'm just saying that that's part of the prerequisite, again, of me trying to become a certified instructor. I have to go to, like, a couple of classes who um, f by people who are certified already. So that's what I'm doing. This is my first one. <laughs> Um, okay, so Pamela's leaving. I should probably leave too. As usual, I ain't eating nothing for dinner. I have no idea what I'm going to eat, but I'm going to go have something. Um, oh, cool. You guys are so, you guys are so great. I love how you talk to each other and you help each other. I love it. I love it. Um, okay, guys, so I will see you next week. I will continue next week cutting out the pattern. I'm not going to do anything between then. Um, Karen, I think she's been an instructor for like 10 years or something. I don't know the exact amount of time, but quite a long time from what I understand. Okay, so I'll see you guys next week. If you have any other questions, you can put them down in the comments. I'll try to get to everything. Oh, Teresa's having ice cream for dinner. 
I wish I could do that. But I like I like real food better than ice cream. I go, you know, go figure. I'll still eat the ice cream just after. <laughs> I'll probably have like scrambled eggs or something like that. Yep. Uh, okay, so I'll see you guys next week. Mwah! Thank you for coming. Bye. <laughs>